folks. I'm glad you're here. Thank you very much for joining me. It is December 13th, 2024. It's Friday. Christmas is only 12 days away. Boy, are you ready? I'm not. Are my kitties ready? I think they are. They're all anxious for Christmas and to get little things, little toys in their stockings. Catnip and maybe some new toys. I'll have to pick up something for the squirrels. Get them some walnuts and maybe uh, dried corn on the cob. And don't look up. That's the latest from the, probably the government. There was um, sightings, multiple sightings of UFOs over Eugene in Oregon. Three to four unidentified flying objects were reported over the week weekend there. And the drone sightings continue along the east coast of the United States. The government says there's nothing to worry about. Everyone is just being uh, panicked or hypersensitive. Reminds me of that movie, Don't Look Up. I'm showing you here the location of a monitor that I downloaded data for. I didn't get a chance to report it because I spent so many hours doing the report about the unidentified objects, the drones, over the East Coast yesterday. So that's the monitor, and the reason I'm showing you that it's because down over here, there was a magnitude 1.6. This is in the New Madrid seismic zone. It occurred near uh, Wrigley, Tennessee, early Thursday morning. And it shook up parts of the New Madrid seismic um, zone. According to USGS, two people did say that they felt this earthquake. And it occurred at 9.52 a.m. local time. Its epicenter was about 8 kilometers or 4 miles south southeast of Wrigley, Tennessee at a depth of 4.7 miles. The tremor, though mild, was likely felt by residents in the surrounding rural area. Not a lot of people here. According to USGS data, no damage or injuries have been reported so far. Residents are encouraged to report their experiences to assist in tracking the quake's impact. Earthquake of this magnitude are not uncommon in this region. Local emergency services remind residents to review safety plans in case of future or larger incidents. While, the while this earthquake didn't cause any damage, um, yeah, it probably maybe made you uh, stand up on end or think, wow, what was that? You know, and preparedness remains essential. So let me go back up over here. And I'll show you again where this monitor is that I downloaded the data. Right there. And the reason I'm showing you this is because it's been showing a lot of activity lately. Many of these quakes are not being reported. And there's nothing in that area which should be causing quakes. Uh, this is what it was showing when I pull the files and they're really shallow these quakes yeah bringing up heat um, different types of gases let me go here this is um, yeah see the line of heated water and gases and look up over here it's like wow what's causing all that with that much heat I wonder if any of the homes in that location maybe you can tell me are using heat pumps to either um, heat or cool their house. And then, um, yeah, here's some more. Look at that. Yeah, look at this. Let me go to the seismic signature. Boom, 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 boom. These are slow moving tremors. And more than likely, this is uh, caused by fault movement. And we know that this location here, too, is part of the failed rift system of the New Madrid fault system where the United States was originally going to be divided up. There is a few marked in red. Uh, let me see if I can find it. There's one there. And I don't know if that's it or not. These were all yesterday. Let's see. Um, well, actually going back farther. This was uh, the 11th. And this one's marked in red as is that one. When they're marked in red, that means the computer picked up the uh, earthquake and then sent a message 
uh, to whoever saying, hey, we got an earthquake. Now, this one here, this is a signature of some sort of blast. See how it's bowed? The first one's bowed, and the second one that came in is bowed even more. But that is definitely a signature of some sort of blast. Could somebody be actually trying to cause an earthquake in the new Madrid seismic zone? That's a good question. You know, they can also um, use sound waves to create the same sort of signature. Now, the 1.6 would, um, it happened at um, 9.52 um, in the morning. And I really don't see anything close to that time. We do have this one at 15.42. And that one comes in as a magnitude 1.47. We've got another one here can definitely see the bow to it. Yeah. Here we have um, this earthquake at 1551, about a minute before what they're claiming is the earthquake, and it's got a bow to it also. Okay. And, you know, sometimes you would think that it'd be traffic or things like that, but it's such a remote location. Um... Yeah, it shouldn't be occurring. So I'm trying to find, yeah, 1552. Okay, right there. I didn't grab the whole signature, but I come up with a magnitude 1.52. And let's go back to it, because see how it just really rattled on. And it's, they're bowed. They're bowed sig signatures. I'm going to show you an image here, and this was uh, shared on Twitter, which I shared. And it's about the 7.0 earthquake that occurred off the coast of California. And there was a lot of speculation that that one, too, was man-made. The signature here, which is shared, it says, It is exactly what we would expect to happen if Russia used a nuclear tsunami torpedo in combat. An example of an earthquake in blue. Let me bring this down. An explosion recording in red. Source from the University of California Berkeley Seismological Station. But see how it's it's bowed? That one too. That would be the first wave of the earthquake. Uh, the P wave. Which goes directly through the earth. And then the S wave would be the second wave of the earthquake. As it travels around the outside edge. Doing a Google search, it says when an explosion occurs, it generates both a P wave, primary wave, and the S wave, secondary wave. By the defining characteristics that, it, that the explosion produces a significant stronger P wave compared to an earthquake, meaning that the ratio of the P wave ampl amplitude and the S wave amplitude is much higher during an explosion to the nature of the compression force. Unlike the shearing motion of an earthquake, which generates the most prominent S wave. So once again, this comes from the monitor. Now this earthquake, or series of earthquakes, see that? Look over there. Occurred at 1512 Universal Time. That would have been at 812 AM um, today. It's currently 1101 AM as I'm making this video. And see that? Let me show you another um, example. Another paper, which is from Harvard, I'll give you a link to that, says that the uh, waves are also often above 2 hertz. And here you can see at the bottom, um, yeah, the hertz. And it goes all the way up to, um, looks like 10 hertz. Here's an image that comes from ResearchGate. Is someone deliberately trying to create a large earthquake and a, rup, um, a rupture of the new Madrid fault zone? It would be devastating for the United States if that did, in fact, happen. The loss of lives, the infrastructure, um, yeah, the most devastating thing for our country because it would... Interrupt commerce from going from west to east or east to west. Uh, people would be on their own. It would take 
years, if not decades, to rebuild the infrastructure. You would have fires that would break out. Definitely a shortage of fuel. Think of all the people that would be put out of work, both on the East Coast and West Coast. Yeah, is it just another conspiracy? Yeah, some off-the-wall idea of thought. But the seismic signatures do not lie. Again, there's a the location of that earthquake. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people did feel it and they just didn't report it. You know, we got a lot of homes and farms in this area. So what are your thoughts? Put your comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I wish everyone a very Merry Christmas. God bless you all. Bye.